done many curtain walls over the years, and very recently I did a curtain wall that was a series of arcs tangenting off one another. And I didn't use Grasshopper to execute that, but I was recently asked again by a colleague about something, a similar condition. I actually didn't do this alone. My colleague Wen Cheng Zhang helped me out um, with the resolution of the tangent, so I appreciate that. And um, what you see over on the left is the code. It looks super clean and super simple, and that's kind of a trick because I actually clustered two of the major operations in this. On the left-hand side, our control, the master is a unit length, and what that unit length does is really um, well, it is as it sounds. It changes the curtain wall unit dimension. It is a core dimension from point to point across each radius. Uh, I have a little rotation command that's just for uh, laying this over the top of a bitmap or something that would be a sketch that you're using as an aesthetic guide. So if I go to arc one controls and start to manipulate the radius, you'll see that the, the division remains constant. It's uh, set at a five foot segment length. And I can actually control either the radius or the amount of degrees that the arc spreads. And then for the next one as well, and I can manipulate the arcs always off of a tangent from specific radii. I know what, what people setting slab edges or curtain walls will want, definitely the curtain wall because it contributes greatly to the expense of a project, is consistency in the radii. So in this case, we've got uh, five arcs. We've got a, a large one on each end and small ones in the middle. So if I set the uh, end guys to 35 feet radius here and here, and I set the remainder to 25, that means what I've actually got is a wall that looks sort of random, but it's really composed of just two different radii, and they're all the same unit shapes, which is five or whatever you choose. And you can see what's interesting is that um, without altering the amount of degrees in each arc, doing pretty dramatic toggles between the unit sizes doesn't let the whole assembly drift off. I you know, think super considerably. It's, it's surprising how much the tail of this doesn't wag very much from its, its origin. So if we take a, a little bit of a closer look at this code, if I come in and look at my first arc, this is one of my clusters and the cluster is a manner of dividing a curve. The first set of, of code I just left open, and that creates that first initial arc. So I've got my radius, I've got an origin point, and I'm doing an, an arc defined by base plane radius and angle domain, and, um, and I threw in a rotation tool just to swivel it around and lay it out on the page. So that gets divided by this cluster, and I'll open this guy up and take a look at it. So you see we have here, um, we have inputs of curves and numbers, which actually divide the length of the, of the curve. And um, then I, I reverse the item list and I pick the last item on the list, which is the last point. And the reason why I do that is because when I first cast an arc at a number of degrees, it's, that is not gonna divide by a certain increment. So if I zoom in on this guy, See, there's always a sort of an incremental tail. So what I want to do is find the last point, and the way I do that is to reverse the list and then go to the first item in the list, which is the last point, and it always gets me to the tail end of whatever is the, the last point in the arc. So the divide curve command is repeated um, every other uh, every other uh, component that you'll see here. And that just simply does what I just described. It divides each curve. The really more complex one is the new arc that exists after the first arc. Open this new arc cluster, and I'm going to try and make everything visible. Actually, you know what I'll do? So just walk through it step by step. So we have our original curve that we're sourcing from, and what we're trying to do is create a P frame at the end of that curve. And um, we deconstruct that plane to find its axes. And what I want to do is find its x axes and revolve it. And some of these you can't see because they're mathematical operations. But I want to revolve it and then take that endpoint of the curve. So I can pull this up again. And I want to move it out, sort of 
uh, perpendicular to the curve. And then I create a line between the two curves and then I actually rotate that line. And then I grab its endpoint and then I strike an arc between those two. So that's how I get my second tangent arc. And when you put it all together, and you lace these guys together, it's pretty cool. I come in here and manipulate this guy again to see how effective this is. So that's that for this code, and I hope you appreciated it.